Welcome to this video. My name is Mark Sitian. The title of this video presentation is the General Atomics Blitzer Railgun and its physics. So we have our railgun barrel and it's an electromagnetic projectile device for which we're not using smokeless gunpowder or any type of incendiary thermal to pressure transfer into then force and power but instead we are inducing an electromagnetic induction coil current in a given direction in this case we'll say south and then it is incurring a magnetic field directly perpendicular which then induces a force in the adjacent perpendicular magnitude and direction a vector is developed so the electromagnetic railgun requires an excessive amount of power but for an extremely short burst of power delivery so we can quantify our force vector as the function of the current times the length of current carrying conductor times the magnetic field then its angle of perpendicularity in this case we just use the default sine theta so it is the perpendicular plane i in b so as you saw in the intro the blitzer railgun discharges a substantial amount of power and it becomes a cheaper method to incur anti-ballistic and anti-personnel ground support compared to the launching of incendiary missile systems where an individual shot for shooting down an incoming missile can be as cheap as $10,000 a shot versus at least 100000 to $1 million for anti-ballistic missiles and air-to-air -air tactical combat operations using rockets and missiles. So we have approximately a 33-foot barrel pertinent to the Blitz railgun projectile launch distance, which then incurs our muzzle velocity, and then we're working with the standard electrical efficiency of an AC power source through the wires of 96%, and then the electromotive efficiency, the mechanical motion from the electro to magnetic conversion inducing a rail motor or the linear version of an electric motor. So we can focus on the general atomics blitzer railgun specifications, a muzzle velocity of 5,248 feet per second, barrel length 33 feet, uh, caliber, diameter, and then we're dealing with 120 millimeters, which if we convert that to uh, standard inches caliber, dividing that by 25.4 millimeters to an inch, that would be uh, a 472 caliber or 4.72 inch diameter projectile. And then the projectile mass being launched is 44 pounds. So now we calculate the firing time. So that is the barrel distance divided by the muzzle velocity. So 0 0.006285 seconds is the firing time. And then the projectile acceleration through the barrel is calculated at 254,473 meters per second squared acceleration. So now we can calculate the force incurred on the projectile. So that is force is mass times acceleration, Newton's second law of motion. So 20 kilograms times 254,473 meters per second squared yields 5,089,460 Newtons of force. And its pounds force conversion is 1,000,000. 143,699 pounds of force accelerates the projectile. So then we convert the 
44 pounds weight into 20 kilograms mass. And now we're able to compute the ballistic power, which is force times distance divided by time. So we are multiplying our Newton's force times the barrel meter distance to get Newton meters or joules, and then dividing it into the firing time to get joules per second or watts. So there is 8.143136 billion watts of ballistic power involved with launching the projectile out of the General Atomics Blitzer railgun. So this requires then an electrical power per shot over the firing time of 0 0.0062875 seconds. And most of the power cost is in the capacitance, the charge capacitance, but the actual discharge would not factor into the correct value of the electrical power cost. So this is essentially an RLC, resistor, capacitor, inductor circuit, to then charge our current and then induce a strong magnetic field. So that would be the L, the inductor. And then we have a power station resistance, but generally speaking, it could be then rectified into a DC 408 rectifier bridge for just inducing general direct current electromotive force. So either or, but however, it would derive from an AC electrical power source, first to the capacitor and then next to the inductor. And then the uh, right hand rule phenomena then induces the B and I. And then when the charge is moving from static to dynamic, then we have this instantaneous force. And so the electrical power involved would equate to uh, 9.979 billion watts of electrical power per shot. The range at a 30 degree launch angle and barrel height above the plane of approximately 12 feet would equate to 141.25 miles of range. Thank you for watching this presentation and have a great day.